Hi, welcome to learnhowtogarden.com and in today's episode we're going to be talking about all the jobs you can get on and do in March. If you're not subscribed to us at learnhowtogarden.com there is a link below this film that will take you over to our website, input your email address and that means that you'll get an email every time we pop a new film up and it also means that you get access to our free monthly newsletter. I find March one of the most exciting months really, it's when winter's coming to an end, the ski season's sort of finishing, um, but also in the garden it's when things are starting to sort of wake up, become alive, and it's a great month to start your sowing. Now there are things you can sow in the garden already, main crop sweet peas, well, main crop sweet peas, main crop peas, sweet peas if you haven't already sown them, both of those can go out in the garden. Parsnips, I would sow towards the end of the month. I'm not keen on them as going in at the beginning of the month. Let the ground warm up a bit more. And one of the classics are these, broad beans. Now if we look down on these, these broad beans are already flowering. That's because these broad beans were sown in November. So this is one of the examples where you can sow things at different times of the year. I'll be sowing more broad beans now and they will come after these have cropped for me but it is something to keep in mind when you're ordering your seeds get enough that you can put some in that will go through the winter uh, these are aquadulce uh, they're a really well-known variety they're looking quite healthy uh, and as i said they're probably a couple of foot high flowers so i would hope in sort of six to eight weeks we'll be eating those broad beans it's also a great time for getting shallots or onion sets in. Sets are just the small, you buy them in a bag, they look like miniature onions or miniature shallots. If you plant those, watch out for what's called bird pull. Uh, for some reason with me, pigeons and blackbirds delight in pulling them out of the ground. So you, you could cover them in some horticultural fleece, that'll stop it. Or just put up a couple of old CDs dangling on a piece of string, wobbling around in the wind. That tends to sort of keep the birds away. Last but not least, if you don't grow Jerusalem artichokes, get them in the ground. A lot of people dislike them. I think they are one of the best value for money things. Taste superb. You can never buy them as good fresh. And they more or less look after themselves. So they're the things you want to be getting in outside. And if we look down here, then we're in Betty's 10 minute garden. This is one of the no dig beds. And as you can see, the actual soil levels dropped away so what you want to do now is get some compost out of your compost heap riddle it and riddling just means put it through a sieve and top up that bed to here so it has time to settle these long bits on here that's actually some um, old pieces of seaweed i've put on and while we're talking about what's going to happen in this bed this year we're actually going to be, going to be growing some trained fruit and this is a wonderful example of an espalier apple uh, which we'll be planting in the next couple of days against the fence uh, and we'll be talking about more about that in our fruit series. If you're not watching the fruit series it really is fascinating because you can use a lot of the vertical spaces around your garden to grow fruit on and to get much more productive from an area that more or less you know sits there not doing a lot a lot of the time. Other things that I'll be sowing um, this month under protection and all that means is I'll be sowing them in modules uh, and a module really just to show you this is a module tray. It's a tray that's broken down into little individual modules so that once you've sown the seed there's no root disturbance, you're not going to prick it out, you take the whole module and plant it. Beetroot and leaf beet. Uh, leaf beet I love, I use it as a substitute for spinach a lot of the time in my cannelloni. It's very easy, you can pick it endlessly over the summer, in fact mine is still picking now in this garden. And basically you fill all of this with compost and for beetroot I'd put three seeds in each module, for leeks I'd put up to five and I wouldn't separate those out, I'd plant them as a multiple seedling. You'll get slightly smaller leeks but very very tasty young leeks. Celery or celeriac can be planted this month in the uh, polytunnel or greenhouse. Rocket is fantastic to go in now, it much prefers these slightly colder growing conditions than the heat of the summer. Some of the lettuces, again, if you can give them a tiny bit of protection with a cold frame or something, will start to grow really, really nicely now. If you eat cabbage in the summer, and I have to admit I don't when there are other things around, cabbage can go in now. Brussels sprouts need sowing now, even though we're going to eat them right in the sort of the end of next autumn. They need that long growing season. So there's a lot to be sowing now. If you've got a propagator, your chilies should be in, 
your aubergines and tomatoes need to go in now if we're going to get them early in the year. If you don't have a propagator, please watch our post on which propagator to buy before you go out and get one. Because nine times out of ten, unless you're going to really go for the best, you might be better buying ready-made plants or ready-grown plants, I should say. I'm not sure why I said ready-made. Ready-grown plants from a specialist. And there are some links under this film to a couple of specialists that I've used over the years and really recommend. Bare fruit, fruit trees, you've probably got three weeks to get those in. Uh, the same with things like raspberries. If you've never grown raspberries yourself, the things you've eaten from the shop, it's like having a different plant. And raspberries are so, so easy to grow, the simplest thing to grow. If you plant autumn fruiting varieties now, you'll be eating those come the end of the summer. And I would really recommend get some of those in. Fantastic thing to have in your garden. The other bits, if you haven't sort of finished your digging, you need to get that done and dusted. And hoe. If you have weeds, hoe them now. You are better to hoe when weeds are small and often than to leave it till they're big and they're a devil to get out. And in this time of the year, even though you've hoed them off, you need to probably pick those weeds up and throw them into your compost heap. Because with the damp weather that we tend to have, they will just re-establish. Weeds are the perpetual survivors. They have been, you know, spent, they've spent generations, they've spent eons learning to how, how to survive. And you hoeing them off really won't be enough. You've got to hoe them off and then move them off. Fertilisers, if they're not on, blood fish and bone I tend to use, uh, and I tend to put some on now, certainly on the ground that my potatoes are going to go in towards the end of the month once they're finished chitting. Chitting just means that the potatoes will sit in an egg box till we get two or three of those long white shoots on and again they'll go in at the end of the month when the ground's slightly warmer, a tiny bit of horticultural fleece will go on the top and that will protect those. If you are sowing seeds I would really strongly suggest you watch our March newsletter. There was a fascinating report uh, on the germination rates of different composts and it can make the difference between 89% germination for your seeds down to as low as 33%. And I covered that in much more detail on the latest newsletter. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please let me know. If you didn't, really please let me know because I'd love to cover anything you can think of. And that's Mark at Learn How to Garden on a cool but beautifully dry March day saying thanks a lot for watching, bye for now.